Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Monday, February 24th, 2014. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts here. We'll start off with the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures, and you'll see that the futures are trading higher by about four and a quarter points. Uh, you can see really right around 11 o'clock in, in the evening last night, uh, the futures started to march higher. They were a little bit lower at that time, but nonetheless, they are trading higher at the moment. Also, if you take a look at the dollar-yen chart, which we'll pull up right now, you'll see that that put a little bit of a low in right around 11 p.m. East Coast time, and that has been marching higher. So both uh, equities, whether it's the U.S. dollar versus the Japanese yen chart, which is what I'm showing you right here, or it's the S&P 500, are both beating to the same drum. Again, they will move up in tandem. That's been a relationship for about over, I would say, about a little over a year now. Um, we'll continue to watch for that relationship to be closely intact until it breaks apart and it no longer works. But right now it is working pretty well. So you do have the futures higher by about four and a half points, although they are ticking down just a touch. But nonetheless, you can see how they've really ramped up uh, from 11 o'clock last night. All right, a few things we want to talk about real quick uh, going forward. One, if we look at the Asian markets last night, you're going to see that the Shanghai Composite was the weak link in Asia. So again, watch the Chinese ADRs today. They could be under some trouble. Uh, last night, I believe the Shanghai Composite did finish lower by one and three quarter percent. So uh, anytime you're down uh, uh, one and three quarters of a, uh, 1.75 percent, that's that's a pretty sizable uh, decline and, and uh, a big move lower in the Shanghai Composite. So traders want to be aware of that. You want to be a little bit careful with the Chinese ADRs today. There are so many out there now. Um, be a little bit on the guarded side. Really make sure you have a good level if you are going to own them. All right, let's take a look at some stocks that are out here today. Uh, for the most part, we're looking at um, a merger going on. I believe it's an all-stock merger between Triquin Semi and RF Micro Devices. TQNT is the ticker symbol here. Um, this is getting a big, big spike. Uh, but they're just merging with RF Micro Devices. Both of these companies have really had uh, lackluster results. So I guess it's it's just a sign of some consolidation in the industry group. Uh, may It may benefit both of them, but uh, both stocks right now, I wouldn't touch either one of them. They both look very, very overbought and extended um, at the moment. So uh, leave them both alone. Triquint especially is, 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 you know, really high. This stock was at nine bucks, went to 12. Um, I don't see any upside in either one of them. So I would leave both stocks alone. I wouldn't touch them here. They're already fading from the highs, or else I'd say, hey, around 12, maybe there would be a fade, but it's already faded by about 70 cents from that high, so I wouldn't be a buyer. Um, they're both probably going to hold some gains today, but um, don't touch them up here at these levels. They're just not worth it. All right, let's take a look at BlackBerry. BBRY is the ticker symbol here. Um, stock is reporting some type of news. You can read into it yourself, but nonetheless, it is catching a little bit of a bid. I don't know if there's all that much to it, um, but nonetheless, stock is trading higher before the opening bell. BlackBerry is another one. I, I don't know if it's really worth getting um, too involved in at the moment with the pattern that's there, but it looks like something to do with their messenger service um, is going to be on a Microsoft's Windows phone platform this summer. So I, I don't think the news is all that uh, warranted for the, for the little bit of a pop that you're getting. But um, again, we'll watch the charts. If, if the stock happened to trade up towards uh, $12 or something, it would be a stone cold short. I don't think that happens, but um, nonetheless, you never know. So it's just a level to keep on, on the radar. Men's Warehouse is upping their bid for uh, Joseph A. Banks. So Men's Warehouse today trading around $48. Again, these stocks are very, very hard to trade. The resistance level on Men's Warehouse, though, is 50 bucks. So if it gets to uh, around $50.25, and you want to short it, scalps, you want to do a scalp short, which is a, a quick day trade, that's a pretty good level, $50.25. Let's take a look at Joseph A. Banks, which is receiving the offer. Um, and again, nothing has been approved. They have not accepted the deal. But uh, nonetheless, you got a big spike in this equity as well. I wouldn't touch this one right now either. So again, I would not be a buyer of Joseph A. Banks up here at these levels. Um, let it pull back in. They may make another offer for it and it'll go higher. Who knows? But if you do own it, you trail, you stop. That's the best way to play it. There's some news out of Verizon today. Verizon saying they're going to have um, some good pricing power now that they bought back some shares from Vodafone. 
I don't know what to make out of it, but all I'll say is the resistance on Verizon is $48.38. If it gets up there, that should be intraday resistance. Um, if it doesn't get there, don't do anything with it. Um, but if you want to get there and scalp it on the short side, you can. But that would be around $48.38. Let's take a look at Dillard's today. DDS is the ticker symbol. Looks like the stock is selling off pretty sharply. I'm going to have some gap levels for this this morning. They'll be posted up in the chat room at 9 a.m. Also, uh, as far as Dillard's is concerned, um, we'll see where this thing opens up. But uh, again, we will have some gap levels um, for the stock uh, if it does come down a little bit further. So our, our downside targets are a little bit lower than we would be buyers of the equity. So just to give that uh, little perspective to everybody, uh, Dillard's will be a gap play in the chat room today. So that'll be posted up right around 9 o'clock. Let's go over to the oil market this morning. Uh, light sweet crude at the moment is trading at uh, higher by 60 cents to $102.80 a barrel. That's a pretty solid move. Let's take a look here at the uh, all-important <clears throat> USO, and we'll put that chart up. And you'll see here that the USO is trading at $36.89, so decent move. Stock has some, or I should say the ETF has some resistance around $37.05 and more resistance at $37.85. So some big levels there, but um, again, uh, oil is pretty strong this morning before the opening bell. Let's take a look at gold this morning. Um, gold futures right now are trading higher by $7.40. So it's a good move on gold. Gold continues to hold up really, really well, and it doesn't care what the dollar yen is doing these days. Um, take a look at the GLD, which this morning traded up above the 128.80 level. Right now it's at 128.30. It closed at 127.58 on Friday. So this is a solid move for gold. Gold continues to just gradually trade higher. It's hard to get into gold right now because it kind of needs to pull back or consolidate on the daily chart, but it really doesn't do that. It just continues to just grind higher each and every day after maybe a one or two day pause. So gold continues to ramp on. And um, if you're not in it, I know it's a difficult trade to get into, but gold continues to be very strong at the moment. All right, um, let's wrap it up here. Uh, futures have come off their highs a little bit. Now it's just up $4. I think the market, um, for the most part, <clears throat> on a Monday, you can see a light volume day, but Mondays have not been that sensational. So normally on Mondays we finish flat, sometimes even a little bit on the negative side. That's a possibility today. Again, I'm no Karnak. I don't read minds. Um, anything could happen. I'm not seeing anything special out here, though. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes when I have a good read on the market, I'll let you know that I'm seeing a certain pattern or something like that. Today, I don't really have much to go off of, but um, we'll see how this all plays out by the closing bell. With that said, everybody, have a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts.